All right, so let's have a look at the media responses to Cardinal Muller's Manifesto of Faith. So first we have the Washington Post. Cardinal Mueller had a timely response to the crisis of heterodoxy this past week. I'm not the type of commentator who is going to say that any contemporary establishment church figure is some great champion of orthodoxy. I rather strongly suspect that most of our prelates have imbibed even small amounts of modernist errors. To be sure, some of those who hold to those errors were probably malformed and are probably salvageable when the time inevitably comes, while others clearly have crafted their own new religion and given it the trappings of Catholicism. But those princes of the church who do stand up and speak out against overt errors do deserve praise and credit when it's due. Thus is the situation we, we awaken to on a Monday in the current year. But first, I wanted to thank my patrons for their support of this channel. If you want to join them in supporting my work, there are links in the description below, including links to my Patreon and Subscribestar, which is now up and running again. Also, I wanted to repeat my call for submissions for my blog, returntotradition.org. There have been a few articles posted by viewers and supporters like you, so please feel free to submit an article for the blog if you want using the email address in the description. I can't pay for them at this stage of things, but I do want to help get more Catholic voices out there doing this work. Last week, an important document was released by Cardinal Muller that has gotten some strong reactions from Catholics across the board. After presenting the cardinal's statement, I'm going to contrast it to something a different cardinal said, a statement made by a cardinal who's become kind of a spokesman for Pope Francis. But Mueller's statement is the important one that I'll present first, and is likely why you clicked on this video. I, of course, am again referring to Cardinal Mueller's Manifesto of Faith. If that document is the only thing you wanted to see here, then once it's done, feel free to leave. But let's go over the document first in its entirety, and again, I'm going to provide some context afterwards. The following are the words of Cardinal Muller in his Manifesto of Faith. Manifesto of Faith. Let not your heart be troubled. John 14.1 In the face of growing confusion about the doctrine of the faith, many bishops, priests, religious, and lay people of the Catholic Church have requested that I make a public testimony about the truth of Revelation. It is the shepherd's very own task to guide those entrusted to them on the path of salvation. This can only succeed if they know this way and follow it themselves. The words of the Apostle here apply, quote, For above all I have delivered unto you what I have received, end quote. 1 Corinthians 15, 3. Today, many Christians are no longer even aware of the basic teachings of the faith, so there is a growing danger of missing the path to eternal life. However, it remains the very purpose of the Church to lead humanity to Jesus Christ, the light of the nations, See Lumen Gentium 1. In this situation, the question of orientation arises. According to John Paul II, the Catechism of the Catholic Church is a, quote, safe standard for the doctrine of the faith, end quote, fide depositum 4. It was written with the aim of strengthening the faith of the brothers and sisters whose belief has been massively questioned by the dictatorship of relativism. 1. The one and triune God revealed in Jesus Christ. The epitome of the faith of all Christians is found in the confession of the Most Holy Trinity. We have become disciples of Jesus, children and friends of God, by being baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The distinction of the three persons in the divine unity, Catechism 254, marks a fundamental difference in the belief of God and the image of man from that of other religions. Religions disagree precisely over this belief in Jesus the Christ. He is the true God and true man, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. The Word was made flesh, the Son of God, is the only Savior of the world, Catechism 679, and the only mediator between God and men, Catechism 846. Therefore, the first letter of John refers to one who denies his divinity as an antichrist, 1 John 2.22. Since Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is from eternity one in being with, the, with God his Father, Catechism 663. We are to resist the relapse into ancient heresies with clear resolve, which saw in Jesus Christ only a good person, brother and friend, prophet and moralist. He is first and foremost the word that was with God and is God, the Son of the Father, who assumed our human and nature to redeem us and who will come to judge the living and the dead. Him alone we worship in unity with the Father and the Holy Spirit as the only and true God, 
Catechism 691. 2. The Church Jesus Christ founded the Church as a visible sign, an instrument of salvation realized in the Catholic Church. 816. He gave his Church, which emerged from the side of, of the Christ who died on the cross, 766, a sacramental constitution that will remain until the kingdom is fully achieved, Catechism 765. Christ the Head and the Faithful, as members of the body, are a mystical person, Catechism 795. Which is why the Church is sacred, for the one mediator has designed and sustained its visible structure, Catechism 771. Through it, the redemptive work of Christ becomes present in time and space via the celebration of the Holy Sacraments, especially in the Eucharistic Sacrifice, the Holy Mass, Catechism 1330. The Church conveys with the authority of Christ the divine revelation, which extends to all the elements of doctrine, including the moral teaching, without which the saving truths of the faith cannot be preserved, explained, and observed. Catechism 2035. 3. Sacramental Order. The Church is the universal sacrament of salvation in Jesus Christ, Catechism 776. She does not reflect herself, but the light of Christ, which shines on her face. But this happens only when the truth revealed in Jesus Christ becomes the point of reference, rather than the views of a majority or the spirit of the times. For Christ himself has entrusted the fullness of grace and truth to the Catholic Church, Catechism 819, and he himself is present in the sacraments of the Church. The Church is not a man-made association whose structures its members voted into being at their will. It is of divine origin. Quote, Christ himself is the author of ministry in the Church. He set her up, gave her authority and mission, orientation, and goal. End quote. Catechism 874. The admonition of the Apostle is still valid today. That cursed is anyone who proclaims another gospel. Quote, Even if we ourselves were to give it or an angel from heaven. End quote. Galatians 1.8. The mediation of faith is inextricably bound up with the human credibility of its messengers, who in some cases have abandoned the people entrusted to them, unsettling them and severely damaging their faith. Here the word of scripture describes those who do not listen to the truth and who will follow their own wishes, who flatter their ears because they cannot endure sound doctrine. Care for, uh, from 2 Timothy 4, 3-4. The task of the magisterium of the church is to, quote, preserve God's people from deviations and defections, end quote, in order to, quote, guarantee them with the objective possibility of professing the true faith without error, end quote, 890. This is especially true with regard to all seven sacraments. The Holy Eucharist is, quote, source and summit of the Christian life, end quote, Catechism 1324. The Eucharistic sacrifice in which Christ includes us in his sacrifice of the cross is aimed at the most intimate union with him, Catechism 1382. Therefore, the, the Holy Scripture admonishes with regard to the reception of the Holy, of the Holy Communion, quote, Whoever eats unworthily of the, of the bread and drinks from the Lord's cup makes himself guilty of profaning the body and of the blood of the Lord, end quote, 1 Corinthians 11.27, quote, Anyone conscious of a grave sin must receive the sacrament of reconciliation before coming to communion, end quote, Catechism 1385. From the internal logic of the sacrament, it is understood that civilly remarried divorcees, whose sacramental marriage exists before God, as well as those Christians who are not in full communion with the Catholic faith and the Church, just as all who are not properly disposed cannot receive the Holy Eucharist fruitfully, Catechism 1457, because it does not bring them to salvation, to point this out corresponds to the spiritual work of mercy. The confession of sins in holy confession at least once a year is one of the church's commandments, Catechism 2042. When the believers no longer confess their sins and no longer experience the absolution of their sins, salvation becomes impossible. After all, Jesus Christ became man to redeem us from our sins. The power of forgiveness that the risen Lord has given to the apostles and their successors in the ministry of bishops and priests applies also for mortal and venial sins, which we commit after baptism. The current popular practice of confession makes it clear that the conscience of the faithful is not sufficiently formed. God's mercy is given to us that we might fulfill his commandments to become one with his holy will, and not so as to avoid the call of repentance. Catechism 1458. Quote, the priest continues the work of redemption on earth, end quote. Catechism 1589. 
The ordination of the priest, quote, gives him a sacred power, end quote, Catechism 1592, which is irreplaceable, because through it Jesus becomes sacramentally present in his saving action. Therefore, priests voluntarily opt for celibacy as, quote, a sign of new life, end quote, Catechism 1579. It is about the self-giving in the service of Christ in his coming kingdom. With a view to receive the ordination in the three stages of this ministry, the church is, quote, bound by the choice made by the Lord himself. That is why it is not possible to ordain women, end quote, Catechism 1577. To imply that this... So impossibility is somehow a form of discrimination against women shows only the lack of understanding of the sacrament, which is not about earthly power, but the representation of Christ, the bridegroom of the church. 4. Moral Law Faith and life are inseparable, for faith apart from works is dead. Catechism, 1815. The moral law is the work of divine wisdom and leads man to the promised blessedness. Catechism, 1950. Consequently, the, the knowledge of the divine and natural law is necessary, end quote, to do good and reach this goal, Catechism 1955. Accepting this truth is essential for all people of goodwill, for he who dies in mortal sin without repentance will be forever separated from God, Catechism 1033. This leads to practical consequences in the lives of Christians who are often ignored today. The moral law is not a burden, but part of that liberating truth, John 832, through which the Christian walks on the path of salvation, which may not be rel relativized. 5. Eternal Life Many wonder today what purpose the Church still has in its existence, when even bishops prefer to be politicians rather than to proclaim the Gospel as teachers of the faith. The role of the Church must not be watered down by trivialities, but its proper place must be addressed. Every human being has an immortal soul, which in death is separated from the body, hoping for the resurrection of the dead. Catechism 366 Death makes man's decision for or against God definite. Everyone has to face the particular judgment immediately after death. Catechism 1021 Either a purification is necessary or a man goes directly into heavenly bliss and is allowed to see God face to face. There is also the dreadful possibility that a person will remain opposed to God to the very end and, by definitely refusing his love, quote, condemns himself immediately and forever, end quote. Catechism 1022 God created us without us, but he did not want to save us without us. Catechism 1847. The eternity of the punishment of hell is a terrible reality, which, according to the testimony of Holy Scripture, attracts all who, quote, die in a state of mortal sin, end quote. Catechism 1033. The Christian goes through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way that leads to ruin is wide, and many are upon it. Matthew 713. To keep silent about these and other truths of the faith, and to teach people accordingly, is the greatest deception against which the Catechism vigorously warns. It represents the last trial of the church and leads man to a religious delusion, quote, the price of their apostasy, end quote. Catechism 675. It is the fraud of Antichrist, quote, he will deceive those who are lost by all means of injustice, for they have closed themselves to the love of the truth by which they should be saved, end quote. Second Thessalonians 2.10. Call. As workers in the vineyard of the Lord, we all have a responsibility to recall these fundamental truths by clinging to what we ourselves have received. We want to give courage to the way, to go the way of Jesus Christ with determination in order to obtain eternal life by following his commandments. Catechism 2075. Let us ask the Lord to let us know how great the gift of the Catholic faith is, through which opens the door to eternal life. Quote, For he that shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him, when he shall come in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. End quote. Mark 8.38 Therefore we are committed to strengthening the faith by confessing the truth which is Jesus Christ himself. We too, especially we bishops and priests, are addressed when Paul the Apostle of Jesus Christ gives the admonition to his compa companion and successor, Timothy. Quote, I charge thee before God and Jesus Christ, who shall judge the living and the dead, by his coming and his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, Reprove, entreat, rebuke in all penitent patience and doctrine, for there shall be a time when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires they will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and will indeed turn away from their hearing of the truth, but will be turned unto fables. But be thou vigilant, labor in all things, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill thy ministry, be sober. End quote. Second Tim, Timothy 4, 1-5.
may Mary, the mother of God, implore for us the grace to remain faithful without wavering to the confession of the truth about Jesus Christ. United in faith and prayer, Gerhard Cardinal Mueller, Prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith from 2012 to 2017. So, some personal thoughts on this manifesto. There are plenty of references to John Paul II's catechism, which will please many Catholics on the street, though I myself prefer the simple and, un and unambiguous catechism of Pius X, which is available on this channel if you want to listen to it in its entirety, which is itself based on the Council of Trent. But the fascinating thing here is the response from our betters in both the secular media and allegedly Catholic figures. Let's have a look at some of those first. All right, so let's have a look at the media responses to Cardinal Mueller's Manifesto of Faith. So first we have the Washington Post, that vaunted media outlet of truth in a time when, quote, democracy dies in the darkness. Their headline, Vatican chief, ex-doctrine chief, pens manifesto amid Pope criticism. You know, I, don't, I didn't actually hear any overt criticism of the Pope in that document. Maybe you did. Of course, there was a lot implicit there. But notice how they're bringing to attention that he was the ex-doctrine chief. Let's move on. Reuters. Sacked Cardinal issues manifesto in thinly veiled attack on Pope. Well, at least they're being a little more upfront with their criticism of Cardinal Mueller, <laughs> with their bias anyway. And Reuters is the outlet that feeds, is one of the outlets along with the Associated Press that a lot of newspapers will buy articles from and then just print themselves whole cloth, as we'll see in a second. Because now we're going to look at what the Catholic media had to say. First, first from Crux, who are alleged to be taking the Catholic pulse. The Vatican ex doctrine chief pens manifesto amid Pope criticism from the Associated Press. That's pretty much the same headline from the Washington Post. So that's where the Washington Post got that story from. It's sad that a Catholic outlet is going to just use the Associated Press, but it's crux, so what do you expect? And then we have the Catholic News Agency. Cardinal Casper says Mueller's manifesto spreads confusion and division. Okay, I mean, we don't expect much better from, from Cardinal Casper. But it is what it is. But let's go a little, let, let's just take a look here at one last thing. Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church. <laughs> Nothing against his eminence, but I prefer the creed. <sighs> okay, well, that's nice, but <laughs> there's nothing in the creed that disagrees with what Cardinal Muller himself said. But again, we don't expect much better from Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church now, do we? Charming, right? My favorite, th though, was that tweet from Pastor Jimmy Martin. There is something to be said for actually reading the things you're responding to before actually responding publicly. And imagine coming out publicly and implying that you don't like Catholic 101 level teachings of the church while being an ordained member of the clergy. This kind of thing is always a bit mind blowing because if you're a Catholic, there isn't anything controversial said in Mueller's Manifesto of Faith. But it's not the words that matter in the document, it's what those words stand for. At the most basic level, the only mission the church has is to spread the gospel to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Anything else is secondary to that order given us by our Lord. The Great Commission comes first. And frankly, it is refreshing to see that some of the cardinals in the church do understand this, and are willing to take a public stand for rather basic issues of Catholic orthodoxy that are being denied publicly in an implicit manner. Sides are now certainly forming up in the crisis in the church that went public almost 60 years ago. Finally, if Cardinal Moeller is on the right side of this, then more power to him. Like I said at the start, I'm sure he has things in his past and even relative present that point to issues of orthodoxy. In his manifesto, as an example, everything pointed to conciliar documents and post-conciliar documents when there is a veritable treasure trove of teaching material that could have been cited from before the council. But I'll applaud him nonetheless for defending the faith in a public manner. The crisis in the church has finally led to visible sides shaping up for all to see. Now, compare Cardinal Muller's manifesto to the following, which comes from Cardinal Supich, friend of this channel. His position represents what I'll in charity simply call the other side. Catholics must let go of cherished beliefs to 
discern like Pope Francis, U.S. Cardinal. And that U.S. Cardinal is Cardinal Supich, of course. This is by Pete Baklinski. It was posted on LifeSite News on Thursday, November 2nd, 2017, to give you an idea how long they've been able to get away with this. And that's just currently. Chicago. Francis appointed U.S. Cardinal Blaise Supich said that if Catholics want to engage in discernment like Pope Francis does, they must let go of cherished beliefs. It is our job to take up that discernment. It takes time. It involves discipline. Most importantly, it requires that we be prepared to let go of cherished beliefs and long-held biases, said the Archbishop of Chicago in a talk to the Catholic Theological Union, published on YouTube October 27th. It is this willingness of Francis to let go of the unnecessary and explore uncharted waters that gives him internal freedom while unsettling some, he added. Cardinal Supic has rapidly risen to prominence under Pope Francis. Prior to becoming Cardinal in 2016, he was appointed by Pope Francis to the influential Vatican Congregation for Bishops that recommends candidates to be appointed bishops. Speaking on the topic of dialogue in the key of Pope Francis, uh, Supic praised the late Cardinal Joseph Bernadine's vision of dialogue. Whoo, lad. Bernadine was the Archbishop of Chicago until his death in 1996, and as an aside, one of the men most single-handedly responsible for setting up the pipeline of, shall we say, morally and sexually unfit men for the priesthood from South America to the United States. Quoting Bernadine, the Cardinal said that through dialogue, we can explore our differences and be assured in the understanding that neither everything is cut and dried nor is everything up for grabs. Supic said that Pope Francis's papacy is defined by dialogue, which he said amounts to building bridges. I bet Jimmy Martin liked that. Dialogue is not a dirty word, it's our word, he said. But critics have noted how Francis appears to dialogue only with people with whom he already agrees. He has consistently refused to meet with those who raise questions over how he is leading the church, such as the Dubia Cardinals and many lay leaders. The accusation is also made against Francis's clerical allies. And those words ring as true today as they did in late 2017. If you want to read the rest of that, you know where to find it. Again, if you want to read the rest of that, a link is on returntotradition.org. I don't need to riff on that toxic piece of soupage. His words speak for themselves. Instead, I'll actually paraphrase Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church for once. I prefer the creed, which is why I prefer what Cardinal Moeller wrote, because the two are not only not in conflict, but 100% but in accordance with one another. There is no conflict between what Cardinal Mueller wrote and the tr timeless teachings of the church, as far as I can tell. But you actually have to understand the timeless teachings of the church to get that. And I'm not certain that those criticizing his statement understand that themselves. As always, thank you for listening and for your support. Pray and do acts of penance for the liberation and exaltation of the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Viva Cristo Rey.